Hi. So today we're going to talk about item analysis and um, and what those are implications for our um, our testing. And really, item analysis is a way that we can analyze our data from our tests and really determine if our items are functioning the way in which we'd hope that they would. If our items are really good items or not. So this is going to be a lot of math. So I'm wearing my pie shirt. If you can see in the video, yay! Um, which makes me really happy. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do this item analysis for your content lab this week, but I want you to be familiar with the process. This is the type of thing that test creators do. This is the type of thing at the district level. They'll do item analysis for the district test. So if you're ever a district curriculum supervisor, this is the kind of thing that you're doing. And this is the types of questions you should be asking about the data when you're using it in your classrooms. Um, and as the assessment curriculum and data software becomes more advanced in the types of things you'll be able to do in your classroom, um, this, these types of data will become more available to you as a teacher. In fact, I can run these types of analyses in um, Canvas, and I do for the quizzes and the celebrations of learning that you guys take in my class. So let's take a look about what we're going to be doing today. So um, we're going to be talking about item difficulty, item means, item variance, item dis um, index of discrimination, and then using item analysis and test revisions. So, oh, I um, saw this um, and I thought it was very cute. Mean girls, um, median girls, and mode girls. So um, that's your uh, joke for the day. You know, totally free. You can thank me later. Um, okay, so item means. We use item means for non-dichotomously scored items. So if I want to know overall how my students did on the essay, I can take the mean, right? I can take the average score on the item. And again, that can range from zero to the total number of points of that item. And it's just the sum of all the scores divided by the number of people who took that item, right? Very straightforward, right? We understand that one. And we're only going to use item means for items that are non-dichotomously scored. We're going to use item means for items that um, I can take an average on, that have a range of scores. Um, and here's an example. So the question was about using best practices, and they the ranged from, you know, 13 to 20. The sum was 154, and there were nine students who took it. So how would I calculate that? Yeah, I would divide 154 divided by 9. And so um, you can use your phones to calculate that. I know you all have them with you, right? Um, so jokes on that teacher who said you wouldn't have a calculator with you all the time, right? Yeah. Um, and so what did you get for the mean? Um, you should have gotten about 17.11, right? So um, out of 20, my students scored about a 17. Um, and again, if I look at that range, though, I've got a 13, a 12, a 15. Those are the students I'm most worried about, right? Okay, and but we know, remember from the beginning of our um, course, how measures of central tendency don't tell us the whole picture. We also want measures of variability, right? So that's item variance. And item variance is essentially the same thing as um, standard deviation, but when we're talking about individual items, for whatever reason, psychometricians talk about variance rather than standard deviation, but it's calculated pretty much the same way. Um, and again, I'm not going to go over that whole formula. It's not really important. Know that you can calculate center, you can calculate variance using a formula in Excel. And at the end of this lecture, I'm going to show you um, an example in Excel on how to do this. But basically, item variance is how far apart the scores are spread. If I was going to do this, um, oh, yeah. So what it looks like, the formula in Excel is equals VAR. VAR, and then that A1 through A13 here that you see, that is um, the, the, I think it's a column of scores, one through rows 1 through 13. So you can, again, um, calculate that, and the variance is 9.11. So we can talk about what all of that means. Okay, now we're going to talk about the really important stuff. So item difficulty. So item difficulty um, tells us about how many students got the item wrong or right on the test. It's um, a measure of uh, the difficulty of items, right? Pretty easy, difficulty of items. So we use it for dichotomously scored items. We use this, we use item difficulty for items that you either got wrong or right. If there's a range of scores on an item, right, then we're going to use item mean. So item difficulty. Um, and it's um, we designate it with a P sub I, so that's a P with the I, the sub I, and it's a proportion of, of examinees who got the item correct. So the higher the item difficulty, the easier the item was. And I know that's a little bit backwards, it's very confusing, I didn't name it, some psychometrician did, right? 
Um, sometimes we call this item easiness. It ranges from zero to one. Zero would mean that no one got it right, and one would mean that everyone got it right. Okay, so we can calculate that. So of this, uh, out of 38 students, 18 students answered this question correctly. So how would I calculate item difficulty? Right, it would be 18 divided by 38. So get out your calculators and do that calculation. 18 divided by 38. And again, you should get 0.47. So about 47% of students got that item correct. So um, that's less than half of my students got it correct. This was a really difficult item for my students. We usually almost always see an, um, more than half of our students getting an item correct. So again, item difficulty, it's the proportion of students who got the item correct. And we designate it with P sub I, P sub I. Now we're going to talk about index of discrimination, and it's really important that you distinguish between item difficulty and index of discrimination. And I know there's lots of I's and D's in these words. So item difficulty and index of discrimination. Index of discrimination tells us how well an item functions. It provides in information on individual differences on items. How effectively does this item discriminate between examinees high and low on the construct of interest? So basically, does this item discriminate between students who knew the information and students who did not know the information? It's an index of discrimination. It tells us how well the item functions. It's not really how easy or difficult it is. It tells us how well the item tells us if a student knows the information or not. Um, so a positive discrimination would mean that high scoring examinees got the item correct, while low scoring examinees got the item incorrect. A negative discrimination would be the opposite. Usually if we got a negative discrimination, it meant that we scored the item wrong, that somehow we mislabeled the correct answer. A negative discrimination is really bad. and usually means we messed up as a teacher in how we wrote the item or how we scored the item. So how do we calculate this? It begins for dichotomously scored items, items that could be wrong or right. And we use a cut score to divide our class in half, usually the top and bottom 50%. Although if I have a really large sample, I could use the top 25% and the bottom 25% of students. And I'm going to calculate the index of discrimination by finding the proportion of the top half of students who got the item correct and the proportion of students from the bottom half who got it correct and to find the difference between those. So it, the index of discrimination is the difference between the proportion of the top half of students who got the item correct and the proportion of the bottom part of students who got the item correct. That's what we see here. Index of discrimination, the proportion of the bottom half, of the, of the top half and the bottom half and the difference between those two. So again, the values can range from negative one to one. Um, a negative one would mean a, a negative discrimination and a one would be a perfect positive discrimination. So a perfect positive would mean that everyone in the top half got it correct and no one in the bottom half got it correct. And again, the general guidelines here would be above a 0.4 would mean that it, it functions satisfactorily. We'd be happy with that item if the index of discrimination is above 0.4. Between 0.3 and 0.4 would be um, little or no revision of that item would be necessary. Between a 0.2 and a 0.3, it's marginal and might need revision. And anything less than 0.2, the item should be eliminated or completely revised. Now, this is just going upon the numbers. We'll talk about some exceptions to these rules and also um, why we wouldn't always just go by the numbers. We also want to look at what the item itself says. And this is really what Popham talks a lot about. He talks about how we can't just look at numbers because this is really favoring items in that mid-range of difficulty. Um, and it's not really taking into account the content of the items. So let's go back to my example of, let's say that I wrote a test about the Civil War. And one of my questions on my test was, um, who won the Civil War? Now that's a really important question. And I hope that every single student in my class answers that the North won the Civil War, right? However, if every single student answered that correctly, that would give me an index of discrimination of zero, right? Because um, uh, it would be one minus one, right? One, 100% of my upper and 100% of my lower. 
1 minus 1 would be 0, my index of discrimination would be 0, and that would indicate that it should be eliminated. But I think that's an important question to ask, so I wouldn't eliminate that from my test, right? So those are general guidelines, but we shouldn't follow them indiscriminately, right? The other thing is that these guidelines work for a large population, but if I only have 20 students in my class, it's unlikely that I'm going to see really high index of discrimination. It's going to be a lot more variable, a lot more prone to outliers in my class. So I can look at these index of discrimination, but I'm not going to necessarily use them in, um, as absolutes when I have a smaller class size. So here's an example. I'm in that same kind of multiple choice question. The proportion in my top scores was 94 and my proportion of low bottom scores was a 0.39. So what's my index of discrimination? How would I calculate that? Right, I would subtract 0.94 and 0.39. So what would I get? Right, 0.55. According to the guidelines we saw on the last page, should I keep this item? Correct. I should, based upon these data, keep this item. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we would use this in the classroom. Um, I might use this to field test uh, um, th some items first, maybe an ungraded or practice test with another group of students. I mean, honestly, I'm probably not going to field test items before I give them in a class. Who has time to give practice tests to students, right? Um, more likely, um, I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use this after I've given the test. I might do some item analyses to see if I need to um, to eliminate items from my test or for items that I might use in the future. So if I reuse test items um, from year to year, um, I might start to revise them. So let's look at an example. And so this is just um, a picture from Excel um, from a class. And in this class, I only have 10 students, you know, Alex to Joe. Here and there were 10 items on the test and I, you can see um, with questions 1 through 10 that um, there's a 1 there if they got the item correct and a 0 if they got it incorrect. So I kind of entered this information already into my test. And then there was an essay that was worth 10 points. We can kind of see how many points each student got on the essay. Um, I entered this by hand into Excel. However, a lot of the new grading softwares that we're getting in from districts will, will um, like if you have a Scantron sheet, it will go ahead and put this information into a spreadsheet for you. So you could do this automatic. You could pull up a spreadsheet like this and the same type of analyses with the data. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to do is um, is calculate the student's total number of points. So in this one, I just added up the number of questions they got right, and then I added the essay. So you can see that's sum of B2 through K2, that's this row, plus the essay, which was L. Um, and that gave me 9. And then if I wanted the, t the percentage correct, I just did the number of points they earned divided by the total number of points possible, which was 20. So the percentage. So now I have the percentage correct for every student in the class and the total grade for each student, right? Now I want to put them, oh, now I want to put them in order from the highest scoring student to lowest scoring student so that I can do that index of discrimination, correct? So the way I do that is I go to sort and filter in Excel. When I click on that, I come up with this sort button here, right? And I can sort by percentage. So I've highlighted my whole file here, and I just clicked on this arrow here to highlight everything in the worksheet. And then I said sort by column percentage. That's this column here. on um, values smallest to largest. So it's going to put the smallest value at top and the largest value at the bottom. I'll say OK. So now um, actually did the opposite. So now I have Daisy at the top, she got on 100, and um, poor Greg here at the bottom with a 35. So my kids are in order now from highest to lowest. Um, and now I want to, first I'm going to calculate item difficulty for each item. And the way I do this, right, is um, this is easy because um, the correct is worth one point. So I can just do the sum of the column divided by the total number of students who took the test, which is 10. So the sum of column B for question one divided by 10 gives me the item difficulty for each item. And when I do this, um, I just copied and pasted that formula for each item. We can see which item was the most difficult. Um, right, it's a tie between questions one and, one and four. Only 50% of the question students got those items correct. Right, which item was the easiest? 
right, item 10, right? And just remember that item difficulty goes backwards. The highest item in item difficulty was the easiest item. And that might be a question on the quiz, just saying, you know, we want to keep that in mind. Okay. Um, now let's look at item mean. So I can calculate item mean for our essay because it is a non-dichotomously scored item. And I'm just going to calculate the average there and the average, oh, and the variance. So the average was 0.73 and I calculate the variance by using um, VAR is the formula for the um, scores in the range, and my variance is 0 0.375, 0 0.5, 3.57, there we go. Um, and now I'm going to do the index of discrimination. So the first, um, the first step in calculating index of discrimination is to calculate the item difficulty for the top half of my students. So again, that's the same formula, the sum of the scores for the top half of students and divided by the number of students, that's five. Everyone following me so far? Um, and then I can do the same thing for the lower half of students, right? So um, it's the same formula. And then I subtract the two, right, to get the index of discrimination. So I have the, the difficulty for the top half and the bottom half. And then I subtract the two to get the index of discrimination. And I can do that for all 10 items. And when I've done that, I have an index of discrimination for each item. So let's go through each one. Um, should I... Just based upon the numbers, should I keep item um, Q1? Yes, it's above 0.4. Q2? Yes. What about Q3? It's zero, so no. But um, Carter, and, Carter and Henry, Carter's the only one who missed it, and he was the very last. And if we look, um, Carter and Henry actually made the same score. So it's really by chance that Carter was in the bottom half and Henry was in, or Carter was in the top half and Henry was in the bottom half. So really, um, I would probably keep that item. Um, let's see. Um, same with Q5. Um, this one is only a point two, but the people who missed it and um, were Betty and Joe, and they were they were really close to the top. So I might not keep this item Q4. I would need to go back and read it more carefully. Um, Q5 has 0.8, it's good. Um, Q6, 0.4, it's good. Q7, 0.4. Q8, 0.4. Q9, 0.4. All of those are good. Let's look at Q10. It's a zero. But why is it zero? It's a zero because every single student got it answered it correctly. So if every student answered it correctly, and maybe it's a really good item, if I eliminated it, that would mean everyone's score would drop, right? because everyone got it correctly. So I'm probably going to keep item 10, even though it's a zero. That makes sense to everybody? So I know that this PowerPoint had a lot of math in it. So I want you to carefully go over this. I'm not gonna ask you to fully complete the math behind these questions, but I am gonna ask you some conceptual questions about these types of items. So please make sure that you understand it. If you have questions, I'll be happy to speak with you on the phone or, um, or answer emails or meet with you in my office to talk about these items or these examples. And this is a short in-class activity. I'm not going to take this up, but I would like you to try to answer these questions on your own. If you don't know the answers or you're having difficulty answering these questions, please talk to me. Send me an email. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, and you can pause this video and try to answer them. And again, email me if you have questions. And I look forward to speaking with you and reading your labs this week. Bye.